All right, it just appeared to me that I've either lost the video that I did for the trailer hitch installations or I can't find it. So I was going to do another one because I got a ton of trailer hitches on the bench here that I'm building. And I just installed this one on a vehicle that's leaving to go down to Louisiana. And I thought I would go over it for those people. I, I, it's just super simple. Everybody seems to figure it out. But I thought I'd go over it. You're going to simply take your spare tire out of the hole here. Then you've got your three rubber drain plugs here, here, and here. You just take and push them out with your thumb. And uh, they'll pop right out. And you won't need those anymore. And then your trailer hitch is going to come with a 3 8 bolt. 3 8 lock washers. It's going to come with a, 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 a thick grade 8. This is all grade 8 by the way. A thick washer, a small washer that's 3 8. And the reason we do this washer here and uh, we can double it up with another washer here is to get the... Uh, the uh, diameter of the washer will fit perfectly inside the unibody. You'll see what I'm talking about. It actually fits in there like it was made for it. It's very, uh, very nice fit. At any rate, you're uh, going to put those washers on there. You take your trailer hitch unit, put these out of there. I use a floor jack, but a second person just sliding up from underneath and holding it. You can install this trailer hitch in five minutes. So you get up underneath there. Line up the holes with the three holes for the rubber boot that you just popped out, and uh, drop your uh, your uh, heavy washers on your small washers, and then uh, take and run. Put the bolt head uh, up so it's smooth inside the, in the compartment here. We want to uh, so when you put anything back here, it doesn't get caught or the tire wears on it. And uh, this is actually recessed. You can't see it on the camera, so it's down below everything. But uh, you want the nut and threads on the bottom side. And then on the other side of this, um, you're just going to uh, install the smaller of the big washers. And I've doubled the washers up. And the, uh, just run a uh, wrench down on them. And uh, just run them down until they're snug. I'm going to torque them, so I'm going to probably about 40 pounds. But I uh, just run down tight, it's fine. And uh, you're done. Here's your obviously your safety chain deal, and uh, that's pretty much it. And if you decide that you want to run a, uh, and then this will just take a standard two-inch trailer hitch receiver, um, so you can put an adapter in if you want to go to the smaller ones or whatnot. I like to just use two-inch on everything. Seems a little overkill for the geo, but 99% of the time when you get somewhere and you're like, oh, like I'd like to tow that away, you'll need a two-inch receiver because that's maybe the only thing anybody has. Um, if you're not carrying one yourself, um, and then if you need to, uh, to wire it up, I let everybody wire their own trailers up or wires up because you never know what kind of plugs or whatnot they're running. But it's very simple. Just pop this off, and this tail light lens out, and you can uh, lock onto the wires here and uh, run the plug out through here if you want. I like to, uh, I like to just ram down and let them hang right here. The uh, and then uh, it's one wire over to grab this turn signal on this side. Shouldn't take you more than 15, 20 minutes. Especially if you're using a four plug. Um, I don't know, a lot of you guys are using those new sevens and eights. And then adapters on them, they fit everything. Again, it always seems so overkill on the Geo, but the truth of the matter is, is uh, the, uh, you might not tow a big trailer with this thing. Um, the, uh, or uh, it's, it's, uh, there's airbags that you can stuff in the back of this that fit right in it. And uh, it'll allow you to, to move some stuff around that's fairly good size. Even stuff you wouldn't run down the road if you're just on the farm or whatnot. You want to run over and grab a tractor trailer or something and move it. And I don't mean a semi truck, I mean just a trailer that you'd have. Normally you grab with a tractor and you can, uh, you can, uh, you can do that. And again, you know, 100, 200 pounds of. Uh, 100 pounds of ton weight is ideal for going down the road. 1,000 pound trailer, 1,500 pound trailer is getting up there before it needs brakes on it. So I say everything over 1,000 pounds should have trailer brakes. And then uh, if you uh, throw in the airbags, you can put a, a, a triple up on that, uh, on 
that tongue weight if you if you need be. And that's usually why you got a trailer on. And like like for instance, right now I've got a geo coming up from uh, oh down south. It's up in California right now. Um, yeah, I think the email is more something like California. At any rate, the, uh, it's got a U-Haul trailer behind it, and uh, they're getting 32 miles to the gallon, and it's a restored car. They just went down there to uh, to uh, do some business or something, and they're just coming back, and we're giving you some updates. But uh, they got like 32 with the U-Haul trailer completely full, and they sent me an email picture of it somewhere down in Nevada, and uh, the tr car was really sagging you know enough to where you know you could you could, the front end was coming up a little bit so you just want to load the trailer far enough forward that uh there's about 100 pounds of tongue weight on there and if you throw some weight in the back back there you know you still have to have tongue weight you know so don't think that you know putting the weight in the back of it, it's not the back of the car that makes the, the trailer not sway it's the weight on the on the ball at any rate the uh the, uh, it's just those three bolts. You can, like I said, you can put it on with five minutes. Get somebody to help you. You don't have to get a form out. Uh, they can virtually just lay on the ground, push it up there and hold it with their hand, and hold the wrench, and you can just run it down. And I do it myself, and I just use a floor jack to hold it. That I probably probably took me 15 minutes to put this one on. But uh, I'm gonna. You know what? Dun, dun, dun. It's a hot day to day out. So I will slide up underneath here. So when you get done, uh, that's all you got right there. And uh, you are uh, ready to go. And uh, this is a great hitch. We've been using this for years. And I have towed stuff that should not have been towed. And uh, it is just a bulletproof. It's actually based on a base plate mount for a fifth wheel unit on a full size pickup truck where they have the 12 inch plate in the middle of the, the bed with the ball on it with the 438 bolts. It's uh, that setup is usually rated at about 3,000 pounds of tongue weight for a big fifth wheel. I think it's 3,000 pounds, it might be 2,000 pounds. I can't remember for a long time. At any rate, that's the same idea on this, and we're only trying to put, you know, 100 pounds on it, and not a 10 or 12,000 pound fifth wheel trailer. And, uh, so it, it works beautifully. And keep in mind, an old Chevy pickup truck or Ford pickup truck, I don't know about the brand new ones, but they only have four bolts to hold the whole bed on the truck. And then you throw a quarter inch plate steel in the center of it, with a ball welded to it or bolted to it and then it's just four bolts so this is a it's got three bolts and we're not gonna nearly be up that high so it's a it's a tough unit it works really super well and it beats the crap out of anything else that you bolt or strap because there's technically nothing to hook the another pitch to i've seen a million of them on ebay well, i shouldn't say a million there's a couple two or three out there and they're just horrible and uh you know i originally built this because uh, I actually had one rip off, and uh, the, uh, it was a nightmare situation. Some funky strap that somebody put underneath with bolt holes they drilled. And, yeah, luckily uh, I was able to get to the side of the road and stop before it all came apart and lost my load. And uh, so there and there, and then everything just goes back together like it was stock throwing my hand under here like you can see what I'm pointing at. The, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a great kit and if there's the other video that's done a lot more professionally <laughs> somewhere on my YouTube site. Like I said I couldn't find the link and uh, I've got a dozen of these things I'm sending out today so I thought I better uh, give everybody a, a big update. And uh, again, if you're going to run more than 100 pounds of tongue weight, or if you're running like a cargo rack back here, like, like on mine, I actually have a rack back here that I drive my riding lawnmower up on. I don't know what it weighs. I don't think it weighs as much as like a Harley, but it's got to be a few hundred pounds. I don't think two people could pick it up. At any rate, with the airbags pumped up to like 35 pounds or whatever, 
I go right down the road. And if you're doing bicycles and stuff on it, um, you know, again, there's keeping the car level makes the, the braking and steering correct, and then keeping the tongue weight heavy enough so when you hit the brakes that the tongue isn't trying to lift up and steer because that's what gets you sway. Um, and uh, so there's no difference in a geo or a one ton pickup truck setting it up, just it's got to be set up right. But on the geo, the tongue weight comes in, and and the re or not the tongue weight, but the the back end weight comes in, because if you throw you and the wife and a couple kids in there, and then throw your ice chest and stuff in, all of a sudden this thing starts to squish, and then you throw a hundred pounds, you know, a foot and a half behind the, or two feet behind the rear tire, the leverage and stuff. So some airbag, if you need airbags, all around me, but they install. Oh, well, they install pretty quick. I think the very first pair I ever did was like three hours, and you know, I've done a bunch of them. It probably takes an hour, and then it's just a, a little air fitting on the back, and uh, kind of like air shocks, but it's bags. Uh -oh. Okay, I'm going to end this thing because I see we're about 12 minutes into this video.